two, though, of the ties. He th he'll look at this as a huge opportunity. Yeah. This... Oh! oh! Big shot from there it was. There Good heart, ten rounds. Neutral corner here, there's a knockdown, the one behind me. Shake hands now, and the start of the last round, may the best man win. Well, title on the line, ten three-minute rounds. And this one, I'm on shot, and Sutnaboa set to do battle here. Steve White, Mark DeHammer, Castanini, and joined by the living legend himself, Dave Hedgecock. Dave, your thoughts on this one? Yes, well, ties usually start off slow, and I've seen Yat Pole fight before. He's a bit of a runner, and Caesar's going to have to close the gap and make a fight of it. So this one coming to you on Fox Sports, brought to you by Ultra Tune and Invisigard. We thank them again for their support of boxing here in Victoria and Australia. And I was going to plug our other sponsor, but uh, he's being pretty narky about it. So uh, he'll have to wait. Oh, fast hand work already from Jutsi Pol. Caesar's going to have his work cut out for him here tonight, Dave. What do you think? Definitely. Um, Pol's a very good mover. And he moves back and only closes the gap every now and then. Caesar's got to close the gap continually. And uh, for the viewers at home watching, Mr. Dave Hedgecock has uh, done everything that needs to be done in Aussie fight sports. One of the real, true legends and pioneers of the sport. It's an absolute honour to have him here uh, for this fight. Someone uh, who I've trained with and looked up to for many years. Been a mentor and a friend. And uh, his comments are going to be well listened to. So, crisp start to this first round. Caesar, he's snappy. You can see he's done the work uh, training with Ray Giles and, uh, and the crews with Julian Holland in the corner, Dave. So uh, you've, you've uh, been a witness and they trained alongside these guys in prep for this one? Yes, I certainly have, and uh, they trained very, very hard, and, and Ray's a very good, uh, astute, can, can looking at the other fighter, and what works out the best ways possible to cut those angles and land shots. It's got good power from both hands, Caesar, and uh, snappy and fast with his combinations as well. But the youth pole, as, uh, as you suggested, may just have be starting a little bit slower than, yeah. uh, than the norm. It's a 10-rounder. So uh, there's a bit of a duration there to be to be working through. So he's probably looking to conserve energy for the latter rounds when it gets closer. So Yudapol's last fight back in 27th of July this year, win over Master Suro for Caesar. Put back in August, win over Christian Ariel Lopez, knockout in the third round. Oh, nice! Just turn off the ropes and counter. Sharp to the body there from Caesar. Caesar, of course, uh, the southpaw. Uh, Yuthipol orthodox. So uh, that's, this is the third fight tonight we've had opposing stances. Yep. <laughs> so they're going to be looking for, again, as we've stated, positioning of that lead put to the outside so they can generate power off the rear side like that. Yeah. Down to the Broken. body. Nice counter uppercut there from mm. Yuthipol. Very sharp hands, isn't he? He's got good, he's got good anticipation, good counter fighting. I think that's the way he's going to continue the fight on as much as he can. He doesn't want to close it up and uh, turn it into a brawl with Caesar. Suits Caesar too much. But just a few seconds remaining in round number one. And some good display of technique from both of them. That's the end of round one round of ten. One and well, how did you see that first round, Dave? Well, actually, I thought it was very even. I thought uh, Nittapol landed some very clean shots. Caesar stepped up all the time, but the counter punching and Nittapol, I thought, gave him a bit of an edge that first round. So round number two. Of 10, super fight, lightweight title on the line. And Udipol with a 1-2 to start things. And a flurry from both gentlemen. We talked to the about body. the preferred uh, target area for Caesar of, with the lead is going to the body. And, uh, I think he's looking to set that rear hand, so one load of the body, and then probably roll the uh, the left hook up high over the top if he can rotate through enough. Yeah, that's that's for sure. And he's also palming off um, Caesar's jab, palming it off, and then tapping him with the right hand over the top. He's yeah. counter punching superb, actually. He is, isn't he? Very he's clean. Well. Well, certainly, uh, Brian Armatruda has matched this one a treat, even though uh, Caesar's the fighter that uh, is, I suppose, in his stable. He's done him uh, no favours put a real challenger up for the title. Uh, all credibility to him for doing so, Dave. 
Oh, definitely. It, uh, this uh, ladder pole's very crisp, isn't he? He yeah. seems to be landing the cleaner shots and landing them per very perfect, you know, perfectly timed. Good head movement, good anticipation. Great technical display so far from Udipol. Only 30 years old, 23 fights of experience. And no losses among them, 16 knockouts to his credit. And nice. beautiful counter straight right there to finish on the outside. And again, you can see Caesar's having a bit of trouble because he's closing the gap, but then he's moving back again. And every time he has to close the gap, he's getting tagged. Actually, see a little welt under the right eye there of Caesar. Well, Yusipol doing uh, a great job of counter fighting, if you wonder uh, what it's like to. Uh, to see a, a good fighter counter fight. You're seeing it right now from the tie with the white shorts, the red trim. And the trouble is, Hammer, I don't even think he's warmed up yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll be he'll be looking to uh, start the work rate probably from the fourth onwards, I'd say. Oh, nice combination there from Beautiful. Like he's trying to really in his groove at the moment. A very straight puncher, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And, yeah. and, it, and it's fast. Thumb up, beautiful. rolls it through yeah. beautifully. He's not trying to power up yet either, whereas Caesar's really trying to load up. Yeah. And I think he's very predictable by the way he's doing it. And uh, as I said, he's in and out. He's got to get in and stay in. That's really, when he turns it into a bit of a brawl, that's when you probably see Caesar at, at his, his best. best. Yeah. But uh, you think Paul, they've done their homework, the ties, and they certainly know what to avoid, and they're doing a good job of it at this stop. point. Keep them yeah. up a bit. You're a bit low. Let's go. What warning there for a low shot there on Caesar. And a good call from the centre referee. And going to the body yet again. Ten seconds left in round number three. And Caesar's having to work very hard, isn't he? And uh, the other guy's just sitting back, but he's picking the points. You know, for, for mine, I think... Uh, Caesar will may well he's got to be careful he doesn't let himself get frustrated because when he gets frustrated we know when you're frustrated your game plan goes right out your timing goes out your shots start missing and your downward spiral so they really need to address that with Caesar right they now certainly do. so round number four of this 10 round title fight super lightweight title on the line interim WBA title and beautiful putting on a very good display of precision striking. Once again, the Melbourne Pavilion, the premier venue for boxing in Australia these days, in my opinion, is looking an absolute tree. Capacity capacity crowd sold out, Brian Armatruda has told us. And a big thank you to our major sponsor, Ultra Tune, for getting right behind this event, making it all possible. So we have Caesar. Oh, I'd have... Uh... Udipolo ahead on the first uh, three guys. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are, Dave. Yeah, mine the same. Yeah. Yeah. Caesar's jab just isn't making the target, and therefore he's be falling short with his left hand. And uh, you know, and this other guy's just plugging him, picking him off as he's coming in. So, Dave, if you were in the corner with Caesar, what uh, what advice would you be giving him? The advice I'd be giving him is to get in there, stay in there, hang on to him, do what you got to do, brawl him a little bit, push him up against the ropes. No good being out in the centre. He moves too well. He's countering too many. I think uh, from a technical standpoint, uh, Dizzy Pole sort of has it. You know, he's a class act, obviously. So you've got to take him uh, out of his comfort zone and turn exactly. it into a turn it into a street fight. Right. Put exactly. him up against the ropes, put the shoulder on the chest, and just wail in on him and make him uncomfortable. You've got try, to rough him up. That's yeah, what try and phase him a bit. Try and break his try and break his rhythm, in fact. Because Caesar's jab's falling short. You know, he's landing the occasional good shot, but he's getting tagged three or four as soon as he does. Nice fake, nice fake step in then, Caesar, but he stalled a little on his combination. I think he, uh, he had the right idea to get in and put the pressure on, but uh, just was a little bit reluctant to pull the trigger. And Caesar doing, as I said, all of the attacking of Udipol quite content. Well, that oh. a great flurry there from Udipol. That was a five, six punch flurry from Udipol. Nice that, left that, there yeah. on the way out. A big left hand from Caesar. They're all sort of roundhouse punches, aren't they, Hammer? Uh, Yellow Pole's firing very straight punches, straight down the centre, and Caesar's trying to come on the outside and, right, and unfortunately right, getting right, blocked. Right back, right back, right back, He's right stepping, right. stepping left with the lead mm. foot, rolling the right shoulder, shoulder through. Yep. Step left, roll right. That's Beautiful. a golden rule Got number one. Good shot then. Golden rule number one when you're uh, fighting a southpaw, and uh, Yellow Pole's doing it beautifully. 
And you know what, Dave? We know in Thailand yep. that 80, 90% of the fighters, they're all southpaws. <laughs> so you know what? It's not going to phase him no. to be fighting a southpaw. That'd no, be unusual not to. <laughs> yeah. And Caesar, in, in, in turn, he'd be used to having the advantage, advantage. Over, the, over the orthodox fighters. Without so, doubt. you know, you're talking about the strategy coming into this fight. Usually uh, a, uh, a southpaw over an orthodox fighter has a slight advantage. But in fact, the orthopole would be well oh, accustomed well to fighting that. So, yeah. And you can see the beautiful foot movement. He's pivoting off, off to his left side all the time. Just going Round right. number three. And there we go. So here we go. Round number four. Caesar Amundson and Udipol Sutnabar. And Udipol putting on a striking clinic at the moment. Getting backed up to the ropes. This is where Caesar wants to get him, wants to get him on the ropes or get him in the corner, lean up on him like that, and uh, try and let the big shots fly. But the Uthipol is well aware of the strategy and uh, counter strategizing beautifully. Like Caesar's only throwing three or four at a time, and then he's putting his hands down, having a look where he is, he's giving the Uthipol time to move away and reset. He's got to stay on him and rush him. Of course, uh, of course, it's a one punch in the flurry that all they need is, is for that one punch to land. The less right. numbers you're right. throwing, right. the right. more likely that your opponent is able to evade them. If you throw two punches, they, they've got a high probability of making a miss. Exactly. You throw eight, something's going to get through. It's, you know, punches in bunches, as they say. You see early, Dave, that Caesar came out of the box uh, pretty energetic, came forward to start the round. It seems to be continuing in that as we go on. Maybe the message got through. Certainly on the front foot. Now Caesar trying to uh, push the pace. He's very accurate with that right hand, isn't he? Yeah. The tie boy, very accurate. But then again, if I was in uh, Caesar's corner, I'd say to him, he's going to throw the right hand. Mm. You've got to almost wear that right hand and then, to get bomb, and then bomb after. You know, yeah. wear the right shut the distance, and then let your combination go. Yeah, exactly. that, that would be the game plan for mine if, uh, if I was in Caesar's corner. And you can see Caesar closes the gap, then he lets the gap get wider again, then closes it again. And each time he's paying a price as he comes in, he's got to stay there. He's got to make this a dead set brawl. Put the head on the chest and let the punches roll is, uh, is what Caesar perhaps has to do. At least keep the pressure up. But it's just the evasion of your pole that I think is frustrating him now, Dave. Yeah, without doubt. He just can't get set. Oh, nice uppercut oh, yeah. and straight there from Udipol. Very beautiful combinations. Classy fighter. Oh, oh. swing and a miss there from right. Armin <laughs> Sot. Not that far away, missed. though, yeah, <laughs> at all. But you see Udipol switch back. <laughs> so he's going lateral, goes left, goes right, goes left. Keeps changing his, uh, his angles. I'm actually quite enjoying this one. It's, uh, it's a great fight to watch. He's hardly raised a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Not breathing heavy, well yeah. prepared. Rolling the shoulder, that rolled off the shoulder. I'll be going for a run afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> just to warm down. Yep. You could also see the difference in the body language too. Beautiful, very, very calm, very confirmed. Caesar looking a little, I wouldn't say frustrated, but a little. Oh, he's just, just out of, out of, out of, yeah. distance. out of sync. Get there. Yeah. Just a little out of sync. That's the term we're looking for. That's round four in he's... the books. So here we go for round number five, halfway mark nearly of this 10 round title fight. WA interim super lightweight title on the line here at the Melbourne Pavilion. Big time boxing. Another great Brian Armatruda production. And also later tonight, Zach the Dynamo Dunn, Liam the Cannonball Cameron, the vacant Commonwealth title. Classic Australia versus UK matchup. Your thoughts on the main event tonight, Dave? Right, right, May not get a right, chance right. to ask you. Yeah, no, so that's going to be a good fight, I think. Going to be a good one. Yes, I think it'll be a good one. <laughs> one of the things that I thought is it's the first time out for the, uh, the, uh, the the man from the UK. First time out of the country. You think that may play a factor in uh, in this big occasion? I, think it's certain. I really do think it will play a big factor. Yeah, he's fighting the hometown favourite, and uh, the crowd's behind, always behind the hometown favourite. So well, the the. Uh, the home ground advantage doesn't seem to bother youth of in centre ring now. No, he looks quite confident. Yeah, he does, He's just yeah. uh, glad to be out uh, out of Thailand and uh, visiting Australia, oh, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, well, if anyone can get Caesar up, it'll be Ray Giles. He's a, he's a master. He's trained so many champions and Australian champions. It's unbelievable. But of course, he's got Benny and uh, Stewie Patterson up, in, uh, in the corner point. with him there. Good old Stewie used to train, train with myself then, McKellivan's gym years ago. Yeah. Just a slip there slip. from Unipol. Yeah. This is the sort of thing he needs to do. He needs to rough him up. He needs to make a brawl of it. He's got to change his style. Yeah. Looking for that body shot. Coming twice that's, over that's the better. top. That's better. Unorthodox. He's got to start not just make a fight of it. Well, Unipol steps back and then throws that right. Now, we've seen that and we know that's coming. Yeah. So uh, the strategy would be perhaps to make that right miss. Exactly. Or just take it on the shoulder or, top, or try on the top of the head and then roll in and stay in. I'd, I'd be trying to top of the head and roll in and stay in the centre and the come up the centre. See, he's too far away. He's got to get try to close that gap. And I think every time he tries to close the gap, he eats a right, though. He does. Stop! Stop! Yeah, that he's one up. Take a point off little okay. south of Let's the go. water again. So, point off for another infraction. He's getting frustrated. He normally lands, but uh, he's not landing with a lot of his shots. Centre referee James Bowen keeping uh, an eye on proceedings. Yeah, another slip don't there from... Don't hit him, don't hit him. Don't beautiful. Wipe it again, wipe it again, Ray. Wipe it again. OK? <laughs> OK. Fair bit of water over there in that corner. But, uh, not much over in Utapol, I will right. say that. Right back. <laughs> not much dripping off the skin of Utapol either. He's again pushing forward, trying to create something off that lead, but the lead uh, is constantly just being brushed. Armed, yeah, just being just brushed, and, uh, which puts him off balance for the for the left hand coming yeah. back. And that will do it. Round, Round number five number in the books. Five. We're halfway through, and Udipol firmly in charge of this one. And he's just picking that right hand oh. so well, Udipol as well. Round but Caesar six. in the black shorts, Udipol in the white with red trim. And he's making Caesar fight his pace. That's where Caesar way. needs to be now. Just right there. blowing in, the, yeah. in the, the, the uh, ring just in the com above our commentary position. Stalks forward again, Caesar. He's got to jump on him all the this time. This is where he wants to keep him. Bart slips out again, ever evasive. Youth the pole. Beautiful footwork. Beautiful footwork. And you can hear the instructions. Don't let him get out. And Caesar Strang right on Udipol. Udipol weathering the storm so far. Well, Caesar's uh, certainly getting his road work in now. at this point. Yeah. Oh, this big a, straight right there. He's right. running him all Get over back. the Get ring. Right Watch your head. Watch trying your head. to chase yeah. him down. And no more than a foot and a half away from him. That's where he needs to be. Yeah. Looking Don't for the uppercut either. there was Udipol. Unipol uh, gone from the straight right, now going to the right uppercut. So he's changing his angle of attack on that power side. This is a better round for Caesar, the start of it, for sure. Definitely, yeah. And we had that flurry right here moments yeah. ago. That was uh, really what we've been calling for for exactly. most of this fight. The one two from Unipol. Right. And he just extends so well as break, with, off his punches too. Nothing short, everything long. Full full uh, reach being extended. Step back, right hand, with the bowl. Caesar again closes the distance. Stalks forward. Tries to get the shot away. Just catches him with that little lead hook there. Nice. That's where he's got to be. He's got to stay right, right there. Right there, hold right, step back right there. Beautiful, just the one fight outside Thailand on top of this one that was in China so every other one of his fights has been inside Thailand so if we talked about the travel factor for Liam Cameron how much would it play if any in this one it looks pretty comfortable yeah. so far Hammer it looks comfortable you know you've got to think of the mentality too though of the ties he, he'll look at this as a huge opportunity yeah. this oh, oh big oh, shot from there it was there it was him. Oh, <laughs> Faith big left hand well from out of nowhere <laughs> Seven. And you notice Eight. that's closing okay. the gap. Okay. It gave him that position okay. to land yeah. it. Yeah. That's what he needed to do right he from the word go. He's going to jump on him now. And here he smells blood. And Caesar Monsot. Don't blame him, Caesar. He's yeah. got to brawl him. Keep brawling, Caesar. Looking to put Udipol away. Udipol looks to be okay so far. Udipol's lead hand coming dangerously low now. If Caesar rolls that overhand left. 
or overhand, oh, sorry, overhand right off his lead side. Stalks forward. Again catches him with that lead. Much better round. Well, definitely undone now. Oh, yeah, definitely and seizes round that one. If we take a look at the replay. Uh, you watch this. Here it comes. Uh, this is yeah, the see, shot. He did, was unrelenting. Bang. Bang. He just kept moving up, kept moving up, kept moving up, unrelenting, and he, and he finally got the shot he was looking and for. And that was that overhand left. Rolled it in nicely. <laughs> That's, and that's it, what we spoke about earlier. He was uh, he was getting frustrated, getting confounded. Now that one shot has turned this one on its head again. This uh, round seven of a ten round title fight. Uh, Paul, first five. Yeah, see, arguably his staying oh, there. And, see what happens. See oh, what that happens. Oh, that was above the belt. So to the body there. Yeah, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Arm right top. Didn't beautiful see that one initially. So two knockdowns now here for Caesar Amundsen. And he well oh. and truly has got another big shot there from Caesar. The straight left from Caesar now. You lift holes, Vin Rock. They go toe to toe. Both went. Rock him, suck him here. Caesar him will win here. that. Caesar will win that exchange. Boy, you can see the eyes of Unipol uh, a little yes. drowsy. Yes. And certainly uh, that body shot's taking the wind out of him. Oh, Loving straight overhand. Right. The overhand. Oh. So overhand, my overhand, a little bit excited there, but overhand Caesar. right to the straight left. Uthipol hanging on. Uthipol trying to oh. slow oh. Big oh. shot. Another uppercut there Getting from Caesar. Club. This could be all over, Hammer. Toe to toe, mm. they're throwing the big leather. Oh, big the uppercut. The Everlast gloves are certainly getting <laughs> tested out. <laughs> well, more leather thing <laughs> thrown there <laughs> than the blue oyster, <laughs> boy, oyster bar. <laughs> And the Thai boy doesn't have a lot of power, does he, by the looks of no, He's landing he's, clean before. Yeah, he's got the skills uh, and he's got the shots, but he doesn't have the power of Caesar. Caesar. He's going to take oh, a knee. He's taking a knee. That's, 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 that's it. all that's over. That's Caesar Amundsen walks away with the interim WBA super lightweight title. Wow. <laughs> Turning on the power was a Caesar. If he hadn't done that from round one, I don't think it would have gone three or four rounds. You know? I, I think uh, certainly... Uh, the, the tie you think pole on the outside was just showing his skill. And you know what? He had skill. He, he had movement. He had uh, good evasion. He had it all. But what he didn't have against Caesar was the power into the body. Look for the uppercut. Give himself a little room, but not so much room that you think pole could get away. And, uh, Caesar gets the strap, gets the hardware. Yeah, well that's, done. That's well done. Straight left, to the, straight left to the body, yeah, set oh, it all yeah. up, and that was all she wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, this one was stopped at round number seven. One minute, 37 seconds. He retains his WBA Oceania super lightweight title. Melbourne boy, Augusto Caesar Montjoart. As Michael Ghetto presents the WBA Oceania. This is the first round.